Hello and welcome back to the Level Cap Podcast, where we will bring you competitive gaming, BattleCon, Level 99 games, or otherwise. Yeah, welcome everybody, and uh, this week we have an exciting special guest with us, and our guest of the week is Marco... What? No. Oh, you mean... Yeah, okay. It's Charles. Introduce them, Marco. All yeah, right, yeah. right. It's Charles, everybody. Say hi to Charles, world hi, Battlecon champion. Hi, guys. Oh. Nice meeting here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. So Charles is joining us from... Uh, it's it's uh, it's Norway, right? Sweden. Or, That's close Sweden. enough. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, which one is it? I'm ah, it's Sweden. Mistaken. It's Sweden. Sweden. Yes. Sweden. Okay. 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 Right. So, as usual, Charles, uh, I maybe this is the first time you've been on the podcast, or you know, maybe you did future past stuff and uh, came from the future. And no, uh, we usually ask each other how our days have been. So, Charles, how are you on this wonderful Swedish morning? <laughs> Or evening. <laughs> evening, sure. Uh, I mean, we're like from all different time zones, so it's morning somewhere in the world, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> morning for me. It's 5 <laughs> so o'clock somewhere. It must somewhere. be afternoon for you. Yeah, exactly. Correct. I see, uh, I see. So, 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 yeah, but, but my day's been fine. So, um, yeah, uh, it's it's all good. It's all good. You sure? Are you sure yeah. it's all good? Uh, <laughs> Anything good happening? Everything happens? is always pretty good. sure to me. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Um, but as usual, Brad, how are you on this fine New Mexico morning? Doing okay. I'm ready to get back to work. I've been, uh, I've been doing a lot with, um, what's the word, licensing in the past few days. So I'm working on uh, signing more licenses with uh, other series, which I can't talk about yet. But we'll see how that goes. Hopefully something comes of it. Oh my gosh. Are... How about uh, how about you, Marco? What's up with you? Uh, now I'm this super evening. curious about these licenses that you just dropped on to us at the start of this podcast charles well, i'll tell you i'll tell you once everyone's gone oh my gosh. i mean it's, it's charles, super cool i would like, I'd yeah, love it's to super see cool. more i bet it's i bet it's something like he got super smash brothers right charles <laughs> no it's not <laughs> super smash brothers yeah that oh, seems not, like a big why, problem play with me play oh, with me brad in sure. this fiction play with me in no, this no fiction. no no it's i'm not even going to entertain super smash brothers that's <laughs> Oh my that's God. not a thing. That's not a thing that's possible yeah. to get for humans. I mean, all the but all the Nintendo Brad. products in one go. That would be insane. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, it's already it's already a licensed product when you get it, so you can't sub license it, or it's really hard to. Yeah. Uh, Oof, fine. Okay. Fine. You guys are ruining my mood. Okay. Gosh, <laughs> a little boy just wanted to dream, and now everybody's just crushing me and my hopes. Yeah. No. No. Sorry, Marco. Uh, well, speaking crush, of hopes crush, and crush, dreams. Crush, crush. Oh, geez. All right. Speaking of hopes and dreams, let's talk to the hopes and dreams of Charles, the one and only. Well, is he the one and only? Are you the one and only world champion? Uh, I think Con? you had one world champion before I actually got over, right? Uh, so there yeah, is. I think we. Uh, I think we did. We did have the uh, the first year. We had someone who um, who won before you. Yeah. Um, but I don't know that he came back. I um, I tried to look him up online and get in touch, and I didn't hear from him again. Sure. Um, um, so I, I I just come. I just got back, right? Uh, and then I w- went to America with some friends and were like talking to them, and we were going to Gen Con because, of course, that was the thing that I wanted to do when I was in America with my friends for the mm-hmm. first time. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, I got in contact with Brad and was like, "Hey, uh, <laughs> uh, mind if I join in and like talk to you guys?" And they were like super cool and things yeah, worked of out. Of course, yeah. Uh, so that was super cool. Um, then I, you know, went to the World Champion Tournament and I was like, "Yeah, might as well." <laughs> while while in uh, what do you say? While while there, right? When in Rome. When in Rome, yeah, exactly. Well, so since you're since you're just passing through. <laughs> Let's uh, try our hand at this BattleCon game. Sure. Oh my I God. mean, I, I I did play the BattleCon game. Um, I <laughs> the, it's it's one of those things. Um, I was in uh, the Devastation original uh, Kickstarter. That's when I first got okay. into BattleCon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, I actually sent to Brad and was like, "Oh, I was really planning on you know 
getting one of the uh, Battle Khan's uh, sets early because he got in like five or something in time for Christmas. And I was like, oh, I would really like that because we we're like a gaming group uh, where I come from. And uh, we mm-hmm. usually have like a big tournament uh, in the days between Christmas and New Year's, New Year's, uh, where we just gather oh. around like three, four days together and just play a lot of games. And that sounds uh, Brad, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's an awesome thing. Um, so Brad actually sent me one of the five copies he got early, and I was like super thankful. <laughs> Really? That that was you? Oh huh. yeah. Okay, I remember that email. I remember, I remember <laughs> that it was, it was it uh, was you didn't. Know it was a lot of work to get it together, but yeah, no, that's really cool. I didn't realize that was you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and that's why I was like, oh, that's so cool. Um, Aw. So yeah, uh, ever since then, I was a big Level 99 fan. Uh, yeah, when I got the game and everything worked out, and I was like, yeah, this is a really good game. Uh, and I do play a lot of games, so I should know. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, what other favorites do you have besides besides BattleCon? What else? Oh, are you uh, currently, I am playing a lot of Kingdom Death uh, with my friends uh, and Gloomhaven and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it, too many big games currently. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's one of those luxury problems, right? Where. Uh, you just have too have many good games. Nice games. World problems. Yeah, yeah, it's a problem. Don't get to play everything I want to. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> get to play yeah, I still haven't gotten a chance to try out Gloomhaven yet. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. It's can you believe that? At some point. Can you believe uh, that? Like Brad, Brad is basically making like Seventh Cross, and a lot of people who've seen Seventh Cross and seen the concept are like, "Hey, this sounds a lot like Gloomhaven." So we oh. asked Brad, "Hey, Brad, how how much of this is influenced by Gloomhaven?" And Brad's just like, "None." <laughs> I mean, I, I read the rule book to make sure I wasn't reinventing the wheel. It's oh. pretty different. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, but, um, mm, it, you know, but I really want to play Gloomhaven so I can see how they handle progression and legacy yeah. and story and stuff. Because it sounds sounds like everyone's raving about it. So I just, so, like, playtested uh, Seven Cross with Brad once uh, at uh, Gen Con. Uh, is this... Oh, yeah. Don't, don't talk about that. It's all totally different. Okay, now, cool. From Gen Con. I, I will not talk about anything. I haven't played anything. <laughs> it's totally oh, different. It's totally different see, from what I you played. So, so did we just do an in podcast retcon? Is this like racing cars, like racing? No, no, no. Cars? It's just, it's just like, like we played a version. and It was like V twenty five, I think, and now we're on to like V thirty one, and it's, it's much, much different. All yeah. oh, right, because every time you change the first number, that means like you change a major mechanic, right? Yeah. So we've changed like six major mechanics since then. That's fair oh. in the uh, in the game. So it's not. I mean, it doesn't really look at all like what you played last time. Well, yeah, that's fair. I mean, okay. uh, the the thing being that. I found it to be okay, but there were things that had to be, uh, you know, fixed, small things. But yeah, like Brad said, if they, they are always uh, doing big things in the 99. So. Yeah, we, we fix big things instead. So. <laughs> I see, I see. Okay, okay, so, so I think that's a very interesting thing. Okay, we were talking about this off podcast, right? But like, it's very interesting to have what essentially is the pinnacle of, you know, probably skill you can get in BattleCon, at least, like, in the public sense, right? Like, Charles is, like, three-time, two-time world champion. How many third times time. have you been world champion? Uh, this was the third time, yeah. Three three times running. Three times running. Three times running. So, like, like if you're I'm... listening to this, you need to come to Gen Con and beat Charles. <laughs> That's it. I, I would That's I it. would love that, because having the hat trick, that was what I, what I was going for, and now I feel like, yeah, it's done. <laughs> it's no, done. It's a good time to, a good time to, to bow out. So, Qu- someone quit has when to you're be, ahead, right. Charles. Yeah. Quit when you're ahead. Maybe. No, I, yeah, I'm definitely maybe. coming next year as well because uh, I've had so much fun every time being at Gen Con with you guys. So, uh, yeah, it's been a yeah. lot of fun. So like you're saying, Marco, it's actually not that rare at all because me and Charles hang out every year at Gen Con <laughs> and it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, man. See, the, the irony <laughs> here is that I never hang out with any of you guys because I'm Maybe stuck. you gotta got to come to Gen Con. Gotta oh, my to gosh. If won't. Oh my it's gosh. like you live on some kind of island or something. Oh man, it's as if I live on the opposite side of the planet. Well, mm. well you know, this is a small obstacle in our age of modern technology. Ah, yes. Modern technology that allows us to all be in the same virtual room. So, it's very interesting that we basically have Charles, who's, who's three times world champion, uh, and the guy who made the game here, right? Like, because like, it's very interesting... 
because a lot of times Brad and I will talk about the game and I'll talk about some strategy and Brad's like, okay, that's not how we intended it to be. Kind of like how we made Luke broken, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Because Luke was like, if you, it turned out that Luke was supposed to be like an aggressive fighter. But if you played him safe, he was like way, way stronger playing him defensively. And that was just something that in design we never intended and never saw. But it ended up getting depressed. Of course, we fixed him in War Remastered, make him a little less less safe. But uh, it's still like those kind of unintended consequences um, are the things that players discover. Yes. It's a really different skill to make a game than to play it. Sure. Definitely, definitely. And that's very interesting because Charles, being world champion, probably exploits all of these unintended things Every time he plays. <laughs> I think Charles is just a master of calculation. But tell us, what's your strat- What's your secret, Charles? I mean, yeah, uh, give us the secret. <laughs> uh, like uh, Brad said, master of calculation. Because usually I just uh, happen to calculate cards really, really fast in my head. Uh, coming to a optimal solution very fast. Uh, and that's usually a good thing for me. Uh, in Battlecon especially, because I can like calculate everything out and see if uh, what misses, what hits, and stuff like that. And being good at reading people is usually a big thing of this. Uh, for example, I uh, can usually say when my opponent is about to dodge or dash um, with like a forty mm-hmm. percent accuracy, and that's that's high. Whoa! Yeah. What the forty <laughs> percent? Yeah, approximately. <laughs> Uh, that's so, disgusting that's I'm disgusting sorry. <laughs> uh, no, but there's a little bit more to it than that because like I can often predict when a dodge or dash is about to happen but it doesn't no, help me any uh, because I'm not set up to capitalize on exactly. it exactly so what I do is I usually set up so that a, a dodge or a dash uh, is like the only option for my opponent next beat and if you're doing that correctly uh, then you um, you force your opponent into a situation where if they dodge or they dash uh, so you actually set it up like one turn ahead, and then you move into it for a better positioning next beat as well. Uh, so I feel like if we're talking advanced strategies, but maybe we should start with more basic things and then go into more advanced things. I'm not sure how you want to sure. do this. No, just uh, just just, just, you, just talk about it. Okay, yeah, sure. Just talk about sure. your strategy, your um, mindset. So my uh, ground strategy is like uh, first of all, you know, you have to know your opponent. Um, if, or at least the opponent you're playing in the game. So uh, if I'm playing a slow character, that doesn't mean I have to know where approximately I am in the uh, category of slow, you know? Uh, for example, Eligor is slow, while Cadenza is slower, usually. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that's it's, true. It, mm-hmm. It's uh, those, those things, and that comes from uh, game knowledge. You just got to learn how to do that, and you do that by playing more games. Experience, uh, right. Experience, right. Uh, so experience is a huge thing in Battlecon, especially. Um, like you said, it's like you uh, rock paper scissor game, <laughs> and you have to <laughs> yeah. you have you have to know how to beat all your opponent's option. Uh, so um, you know if you have rocks and you have two rocks and one scissor, uh, and your opponent has uh, like two papers then you have to use your scissors and stuff like that. It's, it's uh, of course, more complex than this. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, it's, but, but it's, it's, a good, it's a good lead-in point sure. um, to, to learn about this stuff. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so Charles was talking about um, punishing dodges and dashes. I think that's a very interesting thing. I think that's something a lot of high-level players do that not a lot of mid- to low-level players even think about. Uh, because oftentimes they think dash or dodge is an absolutely safe attack. So can you talk a little bit more about that strat? Um, sure. Uh, so uh, there is like a positioning where you're in the corner and your uh, and your opponent basically only has a dodge option, uh, where you're in space uh, one and your opponent is in space two. Uh, and that's mm-hmm. when you usually play things like clockwork shot or whatever, because Marco is here. I have to say clockwork shot, right? Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Magic numbers, everyone. Magic numbers. The world champ agrees. (laughs) So, uh, instead of actually... One out of one world (laughs) champ does agree. (laughs) So, uh, instead of actually playing a dash there, you have to read the obvious uh, clockwork shot incoming and actually go to the same priority before dashing. And that is a thing that is usually super hard to read, but once you're in the positioning and you know that your opponent is thinking... uh, 
that is an amazing strategy. So basically, if you are playing against Cadenza, playing a Clockwork Shot, you know that is coming. That is a priority of negative one. So what I would do is put a, a negative one priority, uh, negative two priority uh, burst down. That way, I would uh, win over everything. If he plays a clockwork shot, I will also clash it, and then I can dash away because then he has no options for uh, winning that beat. For example, yeah. so um, yeah. So you talked about clashing it. How do you feel that? Um, how do you feel the new dash or the, or the dodge has changed the uh, the meta? Uh, you think it's been a pretty big impact? It's been a big impact for some characters uh, more than others. Obviously, like Lin has become uh, a lot worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Lim, with... Lim, Lim suffered for that. <laughs> Lim sure. is not Garbo. Uh, is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> that said, Lim was never like my favorite characters. So uh, that's, that's totally fine by me. But uh, yeah, I definitely see that some characters, uh, like Demetros, for example, as well, uh, lost a lot of uh, punching power because you no longer can beat the dashes. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. with Meanwhile, priority at least. No, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. You have to clash it. Yeah, and uh, some characters can still like uh, reach the insanity of like priority nine or priority ten or whatever. Uh, and I found it interesting that in the base game of War, uh, all characters actually could get up to a priority of nine, with the exception of Vana and uh, Sherry, I think, with the ex uh, without uh, dashing, so to say. Uh, without without uh, force gauge or without um, uh, dodge uh, or dash, yeah. So I found that mm -hmm. interesting in war. But as you get more and more characters, I find that dodge is actually one of those things that actually improves the game. Same as the force action. Everyone getting a force action that has zero 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 is really nice. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, it's one of those things that yeah. uh, at first it doesn't seem like much, but then you realize it's a really big thing. For example, uh, Ryuk got a huge buff while adding oh, yeah. uh, first gauge. Like, uh, range you can... zero style. Range zero grasp. You just like, yeah. plus two power grasp. And people are like, whoa, where did that come from? Well, it's a plus two power grasp. <laughs> even if yeah, my, exactly. like, uh, even if my um, uh, point blank is down, I can actually just hit you in the face, even if you're not prepared for it. Uh, and yeah. that is something that people mm -hmm. tend to forget about. Uh, force force gauge just something strike force gauge something grasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think I I was talking about this earlier when I was playing some BattleCon online. Um, I re ended up playing Cadenza one game, and I realized that Cadenza now now has new tech because of the new force gauge, right? Because now he can do battery, and the next beat do force anything, and that's a plus four priority attack. Sure, that's fair. Mm. Uh, basically, I have a style with zero zero plus four. Uh, so right, yeah. it is. And it that's... isn't. It isn't broken, but it's like mm -hmm. solid. Uh, and characters like Magdalena in Original War has got a huge buff with because of plus zero right, zero zero. All of her styles are negative. It's so huge for her. Uh, basically, uh, that style has replaced uh, her range style for me because I never liked her range style. So. <laughs> Sanctimonious? Uh, uh, is that the red yeah. one? I, th I think it's Sanctimonious. Ex Excelsius, I believe. No, Ex 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 Excelsius is, uh, has or... a movement in it and plus zero to one range. Oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so you think the these changes have been overall healthy for the game, right? Uh, yes. Barring some for, characters. Uh, for some characters, it's been terrible. But uh, for the most characters, it's led to an interesting development. And it gives you a lot of more uh, healthy options going forward. Uh, that is my experience, at least. Uh, okay. So, Charles. Sure. What was your um, latest three-man team for uh, the world, the BattleCon worlds? And what was your logic in picking your team? I think a lot of people listening would like to know, uh, oh. how does one pick a tournament-ready team of uh, three characters? I uh, I actually pick characters that uh, I feel has as a, uh, so that you have a theme around them. For example, my theme is control. Uh, I always want to control my opponents in one way or another. Uh, so my uh, my team last year was Sherry, 
uh, Sagas and Tatsumi. Uh, wow, that sounds horrible. All, all original war. All original war, correct. Uh, I, I feel so bad about that because, you know... Uh, <laughs> Your opponents are... never have fun, basically. <laughs> my, my, my opponents can never have fun. Uh, no, but it, it also goes into um, what I was talking about earlier. I'm usually good with mathematics and you know uh, calculating what my opponent is going to play. Uh, therefore, uh, characters like Sherry, I can actually uh, calculate when and how they are going to, uh, what priority they will be at, approximately. So, uh, me going in there and just, you know, clash, 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 that's three damage, and then I dash away. That's usually how my beats mm. can go, <laughs> sometimes. Uh, uh, that sounds really mean. That sounds Cherry, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Cherry. Uh, Sagas also has beats where he just wins. Um, yeah. Sometimes, like uh, negation, so mm-hmm. good. Um, Especially if you win prioritize, right? I mean, sure. Uh, my sagas basically never uh, uses the token. Uh, uses the token as an anti. <laughs> yeah, uh, I always have it in the uh, regard uh, in uh, uh, in hand, so to say, uh, to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, that sounds great. <laughs> And and how do you play your Tatsumi? Do you play her like a tank? Do you like sit on the panda oh, and just soak I, through uh, all the time? I never play Tatsumi as a tank. Uh, Tatsumi can never tank. Uh, Yuta should never be off the board. Uh, Yuta can take one hit per game, and then you have to uh, fearless whirlpool into standing on Yuta so he dies at the same time that you get him back. Um, that's how I play him. Uh, that way you uh, net gain. So, so you should never, ever sacrifice Judo. Oh, never, ever sa- sacrifice Judo if you have the possibility. Uh, and like Marco has talked about, uh, Grasp being the mo- least utilized uh, base in the game, basically. Uh, sometimes. Is that that? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the worst, quote-unquote, yeah. base. But I think I'm starting to slowly change ever since I've been playing a lot of Battlecon online. And like... <laughs> Like, I think the dodge change and the force gauge make grasp significantly a bigger threat, especially when paired with the correct styles. Sure. Uh, the thing I'm saying is uh, the best slash worst style is also dependent on your opponent. And that is something that is hard to know when you're playing, right? Uh, so, for example, if you're playing against Tatsumi, uh, grasp becomes a much better base than, for example, strike, uh, where if you can disrupt her uh, movement and her uh, positioning from Yuto and actually stun her out of her uh, thing, uh, you're golden, right? It's like yeah, so good. Uh, and if if you have the option to actually um, like grasp uh, Tatsumi onto Yuto and kill off Yuto, that is worth it. And it's super sad for Tatsumi. <laughs> really? Oh, oh yes. Still... Because it'll do full damage to judo, even if you only were going to do one to, or one or two to Tatsumi. Yeah, exactly. So uh, what, is that right? what I what I uh, what I'm going to, uh, what I'm usually doing is, uh, and that's where I'm I'm playing like strangely. People think uh, I usually play uh, cards that might seem suboptimal for better positioning next beat. Uh, for example, uh, in the world mm-hmm. tournament, I played against the Rexim. Uh, where he grasped me, uh, he played a full range grasp. Uh, I can't remember the attack's name. Um, I entered two tokens Earth? anyway, uh, and dashed. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, basically, I could dash past him and get my tokens back. But instead, I just dashed one space and let him hit me, and he knocked me into the corner again. Uh, but I lost my two uh, curse tokens, and I figured, hey, that was worth it. Uh, things like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Small, I small things, right? That's all you need. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I yeah. also got I also got the setup for tsunamis to uh, tsunamis collide. Uh, oh no! Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's pretty good thing too. <laughs> Disgusting! Disgusting! Yeah. Oh my gosh! And this was the era before uh, dodge, so that no. means you were uh, he, the, it, he he had no yeah. out, right? Because that's a that's a that's a fifteen well, priority overdrive finisher. I think uh, there's no way you're you're dashing yeah. out of that one. No, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, but it was on uh, worlds this year, so. Um, yeah, even with dodge, if you're in the middle of the table, it's 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 hard to yeah, get out of. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, if you hard was... if you hard read the dodge, you can actually tsunamis collide at the best positioning ever currently, uh, because start of beat says that he walks right into your tsunamis collide. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> because it's it's a hard read. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you want a hard read, fifteen damage, go ahead. 
<laughs> so uh, so you do it so... you do it when both of you are both Juto and Tatsumi are on opposite ends and then the opponent's adjacent to either to, 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 to one of you. Uh, no, uh, oh it has to, be, to Tatsumi to, specifically to yeah. because they could just walk on top of Juto. Exactly. Oh so my you, gosh. So it's hard read. Uh, then you cover actually two bases. You cover dodge and you cover a uh, burst. Mm-hmm. Oh my so gosh. if you do either so, of those two um, things, then you just win. So do you do you ever use finishers, Charles? Uh, I usually use finishers actually. If if I get down to the health and I feel like uh, they would help me, uh, the finishers are amazing. Um, oh. I'm the kind of person like I I hit seven life and I'm like oh yeah finisher time <laughs> and I hit the button as soon as I can <laughs> and it's always it never goes well for me. No, and oh, and no. that's um, the thing I just you get have too to. Excited. Um, I I actually. Uh, I'm kind of restrictive with my force gauge usage. Um, so even when my opponent oh, okay. anti's uh, priority, I usually don't anti anything because either they have misread me because I play things that people don't usually play, I think. Uh, so when they, they're reading like, oh, he's going to drive, I basically play shot or burst or something. So their antis are useless. So they anti three times maybe. And then I... Uh, have a six uh, force gauge gain. That means that I can sometimes actually hit a finisher at like uh, eight or nine health, and uh, people aren't prepared mm-hmm. for that. Uh, that's usually when you hit your finishers when uh, you are at like uh, the maximum amount of range, <laughs> and that you're not below <laughs> seven health because people have a uh, a thing in their head where they like, oh, he's not below seven health, so. He can't use his finishers, right? But so this, that's not yeah. actually true. <laughs> uh, not anymore, right? Not right. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Okay, I see. So, so Charles, if you had to give like three big tips to anybody listening out there who wants to be world champion eventually, what are your three tips for them? Give them now. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, hard hard uh <laughs> i'd say play play more games first of all uh the more games you play uh the more uh, knowledge you gain from all the characters right so uh, the more games you play uh the better things will go for you right uh i also recommend finding like one character of each archetype that you actually like uh so you have to play through everything and then you when you find the characters that are right for you for that archetype for example i like uh, Eligor, but I do not like Cadenza, uh, and they are both in the same uh, field. I feel like archetype. Are, yeah, archetype. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, when I when I'm playing a, jug- a juggernaut, I usually play like Eligor, uh, preferably uh, over um, Cadenza, for example. Uh, I see. And then I get to know how a juggernaut works, and they don't do the same thing, but they do approximately the same thing right <laughs> yeah that's fair mm-hmm. yeah i mean they, there's 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 only so many ways you can hit the opponent in the game, so. <laughs> this I is mean, true this is all... true to be fair though you only have three styles and five bases every beat i mean like everybody oh. shares the same bases that's fair yeah, yeah that's fair. but understanding i mean yeah understanding those tools like mobility and uh the antis that you have at your disposal and what kind of tech you have against individual opponents, things that can vary quite a bit within the category. Also, what Marcus said That's is actually true. incorrect currently because now you actually have four uh, bases. <laughs> right, switch. switch. Switch! So good! <laughs> so good, dude. So good. I'm starting because... to really appreciate Switch. <laughs> because we talked about it earlier and it's like, uh, it's actually something that you have to calculate uh, into your tech pairs now. It's like, usually one stat worse than your original styles. That's my experience. Like, uh, including all the texts on the cards and stuff like that. It's like a negative one. Uh, and you're like, eh, that's fair because you gain one force. And it's it's not meant to be like the played style, but it's one of those if you don't have anything, play this instead. Uh, that's my yeah. experience. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Okay, so so those that's... are those are Charles's three tips. Number one, play more games. Number two, find a character you're comfortable with in every archetype. Number three, switch. Switch. <laughs> switch, switch, switch. Always switch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Always switch. Yeah, use, use all, right. all the... Uh, use, think about all the things that you're at your dipo- disposal, right? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. From the calculator man himself. You know what? Charles should just be called the calculator. 
Aww. Like that should be. He sounds like, like a sounds like a Batman villain. Aww. Oh my gosh, it's true. Are you a Batman villain, Charles? Of course. Are you secretly evil? <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst person you ever meet. <laughs> yeah, you played Saga's Cherry and Tatsumi. Yeah, d- the despicable, same despicable Charles. Yeah. Oh I'm my terrible. gosh. <laughs> the despicable Charles. All right. So that pretty much does it for our character of the week, which is Charles. <laughs> Three-time Battle Golden World Champion, awesome guy, and um, special guest on this podcast. We won't throw him into the brig just yet, because we still have 99 questions. Brad, Charles, are you guys ready to answer some questions from our lovely, lovely fans? I know I can beat Charles at this game. I, I think you can as well. <laughs> I, I've not had I know, the You know experience. the styles better than me. So. Ah. Oh my gosh. Let's hope they're not a... quiz questions. <laughs> quiz questions. What style is color green and has plus three power, minus three priority, and soak three? <laughs> oh, I know this one. I know this one. I know this one. Yes, Brad? It's, uh, it's, um, oh gosh, uh, counter. Counter. Oh, Brad. <laughs> Sorry. But it's green. Oh, no, no. I'm sorry, Brad. Charles, uh, do you have an answer? Isn't it Clockwork? Oh, yes. Clockwork? Yes. Excellent. Charles yeah. wins everything. I win everything. No. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. All right. No, but seriously, let's get on to some real <laughs> questions. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. This is actually this wasn't planned, by the way. But here, your games seem to be quite competitive and deep, and reward a high number of plays. Can you share what you believe your new player journey looks like? How is a new player able to play often enough to become an expert? And did and did you expect them to be? And who did you expect them to be playing against? So, do you expect new players to be playing against new players, or new players playing against more advanced players? How how did you factor this into it, Brad? And maybe I'll ask Charles something else after that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I'd be interested in hearing about Charles's new player journey and on the actual road. So, what I envisioned is that players would sort of, um, how do you say it? Like, uh, you know, get a copy of the game, open it up, get a friend or two or three together, and start playing games like. You know, two v two, like one v one, two two one v one games side by side. Uh, you know, you have a circle of friends. You're all playing through, trying to find your favorite characters. You're learning the mechanics of the game. You're swapping off matches. You know, kind of like with any fighting game, when a group of friends sit around to play fighting games, you are all kind of learning the game as you go, and you're all kind of increasing in mastery together as you go. And so the game forms its own kind of closed circle meta where everybody kind of knows what everybody else's favorite character is and how to deal with them and you know, and you're also discovering new tech and such as you go. That's kind of the vision that I had for BattleCon. Okay. Um, but how does that actually play out for, for a world champion, Charles? Um, so I got some friends together, uh, and we played some games, uh, and then people like dropped off, so I had basically two or three people that I played a lot against. Um, and uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, getting to know all the characters. Uh, that said, some of the characters are super hard to get into the first time. Uh, and depending on uh, me being like the rules lawyer and knowing what people usually like uh, in games or, you know, having <laughs> having all the information, uh, I'm usually the one who has to read through all the characters and then basically, okay, I think this one is for you mm-hmm. and this one is for you and this one would probably <laughs> work for you. And it, it's uh, kind of hard, but it's it's very rewarding, especially if people find out uh, that, uh, you know, they really uh, catch on to a character. And sometimes uh, you find that what you figured a character would do is not what it does in the game. Um, Alumis is a great example of this, where I was like, oh, this is what she does, right? Uh, you basically have this shadow marker and it moves around and people are like super scary. Uh, but it's not actually what she did. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's kind of <laughs> interesting, right? Uh, so, um, but yeah, uh, so we played some games and then I played a lot of games and then I won a lot of games and then I had to, you know, uh, go into lower tier characters, um, uh, playing characters that are uh, slightly weaker as they are printed currently, for example, Marmalee and Voco. <laughs> yeah. which, which means yeah. that I, I'm actually really good with Marmalee. 
<laughs> that sounds great, dude. I love marmalade. So, design. so when these marmalade buffs come out, oh yeah, you're not gonna be able to play with your friends anymore. Uh, that's yeah. what we're saying. It's uh, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, hey, I, no matter yeah. what Brad changes, though, physical copies won't change. So no, that's that's I guess actually you can, true. Uh, yeah, yeah. You could always just give them EX cards too. Yeah. Oh, that's a fair one. Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny, Brad, because the way you described the new player experience was exactly how my friends and I did it. So we all kind of grew together, but that also kind of, it also kind of colors the way I now look at the game, right? <laughs> um, there is a reason why I call everyone a brawler. Let's just let's just ex- <laughs> let's just say that, okay? Yeah. There is a reason why. Because that's is that, that all all you guys played was uh, the brawler kit. Um, because because everyone so so the way it happened was everybody in my group either just played Hepzibah, Cadenza, Demetras. Uh, basically, like think of every stat monster in the game. So my only frame mm-hmm. of reference was you were either running six power, seven priority attacks all the time, or you weren't. And if you weren't, you were a brawler. <laughs> oh, I see. that's I see. that's fair, I guess. Uh, that means that Cherry is obviously a brawler, and uh, that's not how I see her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it means everyone's so, a brawler. Yeah, I mean that's actually <laughs> fair. If that's your uh, frame of reference, that makes sense, right? Uh, yeah. Well, well, my. Pre- it's interesting that you guys talk about like kind of graduating from your local groups because that is kind of how it works with fighting video games too. Is that, um, you know, players will sit around and have fun and play a game, but then like one or two players will actually go and get good at it and like really raise their skill cap to the next level, and then those players don't always have those local groups to play with anymore, and so you have to go out and seek competition either online or you know via tournaments and that kind of thing. Yeah. So. It's neat to see that, like the that ever that both of you guys kind of had the experience that I intended with this game, um, and then and then kind of like came back to you know to to join us for big uh, impressive competitions. Well, not me, but yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to All get right. there and just beat me, so you can call yourself World Champ. You'll be fine. Oh my gosh, no, I can't but, beat. But the, you, the name of the game is Beat Marco. Oh right. Um, oh my gosh. Well, that would yeah, mean the, the that the... he's unbeatable, right? If he's the world champ, uh, or he hasn't been beaten during the world championship. So something, something, world champ. That's true. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe look. Okay, let's just say this: I am unbeaten at the BattleCon World Tournament because I've never okay. attended. Yeah, that's that's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Right, right. This is true. That's true. That's true. All right, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. This is this is interesting. What is the vague estimate of the timeline for each new wave of characters in BattleCon Online? Um, any of you are most hyped to get up and release beyond the first. So this is an interesting question for Brad. When are we planning to release new characters? For Charles, who are you most excited to see in BattleCon Online next? Brad. Well, our next character is going to come out with the next update. We're going to try and release a character every two to three weeks um, as we go forward. Um, It's probably... I think we'll be able to hit that schedule, no problem. Um, But yeah, uh, they are... um, You know, maybe we'll accelerate a little bit. It depends on how quickly we get done with the actual features. But we're going to try and keep characters coming out at a regular rate until we hit beta. Okay, sounds great. Charles, who are you most excited to see in BattleCon Online first? Enderbit. <laughs> Enderbit. Yeah. Well, um, I, got, um, spe- no. I got some news for you, Charles. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I'm well aware. That's that's why I said it. I mean, that's the thing. I feel like uh, characters like Rifflem and Seven, uh, people haven't maybe played Seven a lot, but uh, she was on the alpha things a bit of, a while ago. Mm-hmm. So I, I think she's fine talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah. Uh, those characters are super interesting because they do something that the uh, that you can't get in the paper print. uh, print, printed copy right Um, Mm -hmm. and characters like that I'm super excited about because it gives some uh, extra um, extra things to think about something something new that you haven't seen before Uh, that said I am terrible with Riflem because he modifies things that means that I can't actually recalculate everything perfectly anymore. Uh, and that's kind of scary yeah. for me. <laughs> I mean, like, change the priority of one base and everything goes to... Oh, yeah. Goes to the dogs. Dude. It's, it's terrible. Like, it's terrible. I think... 
Yeah, dude. Like, um, if Rivalum starts with residual shot, beat one, and he gets it off, he now has three bases with priority three. <laughs> and yep. and mm-hmm. clashing him becomes... Which means he's really easy to clash. And really Sher- easy to clash, but it... And Sherry becomes super happy. Uh, because yeah. suddenly you have three bases with priority three, which means that if you have grasp and dodge uh, and burst down, uh, all your bases basically are belong to me, uh. <laughs> and and you lose like seven life in the process or something. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and things like that. All but right. uh, for that to happen, we first must implement Sherry, and I think that's way down the line, right? So. She's not that hard, but we have to like. There's we don't have a lot of the triggers that happen on clash mm. or the way to induce clash yet. No, exactly. So. so that'll come a little bit later. But she is someone that we're planning to implement in yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, okay, so Charles is most excited about Cherry. I guess he just doesn't want people to have fun. Just kidding. There, there will be <laughs> no fun, fun having. No there fun will be you. no fun having. Fun. No. Uh, I'm the fun police. All right. Okay. And last question for everyone. This is a. This is an interesting question. How many people have signed up for organized play? I think this is a question that I can answer. Uh, That's a question for you, Marco. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a ahead. question for me. Actually, um, a lot of people sign up for organized play online. Okay, this is all I can talk about. I can talk about like physical organized play. That's really up to the tournament people and people who hold the events. Uh, but on our Discord server, a decent number of people uh, play organized play games. Specifically, Exceed. Exceed seems to be the most popular one. Um you know, some some weeks I get like one hundred something plus games played. So that's a lot of games of uh, exceed, uh, and some games of BattleCon maybe like twenty. I think BattleCon is more of a physical scene than exceed is, right? Like, because exceed season mm-hmm. two is available on tabletop sim and it's not available in physical yet, and a lot of people want to play the the new characters. But yeah, so I get a decent amount of people playing organized play games, and it's it's pretty big. Um, definitely. I think not as big as, you know, probably some of the physical events that happen somewhere abroad in the mystical land of the U.S. of A. Uh, how about you, Charles? What do you think about organized play? Have you tried doing organized play? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 ter- I'm terrible at this, uh, organizing play groups and stuff like that. So uh, I'm a player, not an organizer. I am terrible with organizing things like this. Uh, but, you know, when we get games together it's i'm i'm usually the one who knows the rules and stuff like that so that's important for me uh, that games are uh, you know uh, played correctly is that a thing that you can say i don't know i don't know hmm. and it it's so actually not the sweden. question so. <laughs> so yeah so if you're in sweden and you're an organizer you need to link up with charles he'll teach everybody to play all you got to do is get a group together yeah just yeah, get a group together and i'll you... i'll fix all the rules and i will be a terrible terrible person and win everything uh <laughs> yeah so, lit, the, there are barely any games where you can say that i'm organizing a tournament and one of the people who will be there to teach you is literally three time world champion of no, this I, game i right? guess that's true that's actually kind of fair <laughs> that might intimidate me i might not appear for such a, such an event <laughs> no um, uh, i mean i i that's the thing. Uh, when I play now Battlecom, I actually find myself learning more from watching to uh, teaching it to two new people and watch how they play against each other. Uh, because I I know how I would play it, but that's because I have a play style in mind, right? Uh, so <laughs> watching how other people thinks, uh, that's how I get better at Battlecom currently. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. I really I really like this train of thought because uh, there's often a thing that I like to call veterans handicap, wherein because of the way we've played BattleCon for so long, we tend to forget certain plays that would make sense, but because of our bias or because of the things that we're so used to doing, like me with all of my clockwork shots, right? <laughs> Or maybe Charles with all of his silly moves. Um, we sometimes forget that there are certain lines of play that we could have taken but never considered, right? Um, I remember there was this... W- uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah uh, I had a friend that actually told me like this. Oh, uh, do you play... Like, uh, when you're playing, he's playing against me. He always knows that I am... Um, in 90% of the times, I play the optimal move or calculate his optimal move and counter that. So... 
uh, when he plays against me, he thinks like the third optimal move and something like that. Maybe I shouldn't say this in case someone, you know, wants to beat me at Worlds. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were done. I thought you were done. Like, I thought yeah, you were done that, that's things. actually true. So uh, how to beat me is calculate the third worst uh, move, and I will train uh, against specifically that. Uh, so uh, we'll see if uh, old, I, I'll uh, I'll fix it to Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right all right yeah but but stuff like that right like yeah. i remember there was this one time where i fought a newbie i was teaching him the game for the first time and i think i was playing hikaru against cadenza the typical starting game i gave him cadenza i was playing hikaru and i was like beat one i already know what's gonna happen <laughs> he's gonna clockwork shot me um and then lo and behold uh clockwork this was back in the days of starting positions two and six i think so we were at range four from one another okay so i was like oh this is gonna be a clockwork shot i know it so i i think i play some attack and then my friend literally plays grapnel burst beat one and i'm like what are you doing (laughs) this is a wrong move but then i lost that game because of that move and i was like okay i guess i guess i can't complain (laughs) and that's the thing right some optimal moves that you don't see coming are worse (laughs) It's it's what definitely it's it's so terrible. I know you were like uh, I watched uh, you play uh, online, and you were like, oh, no one plays. Uh, com- uh, what was it? Um, combination. Combination. No one plays combination. Some... Beat one. <laughs> Never did it happen. <laughs> oh my gosh, Brad! Did you see that? Did you see that episode? No, no, I, I think I missed that. It was episode. beat one. Eligor was me. I was against a Schechter. And then, for some reason, my opponent, who was Elephant, decided to keep combination in his starting hand. I was like, okay, whatever this weird line of play is. Beat one, I go, Retribution, Aegis, Anti, all my tokens. And then he's like, Combination, Drive, Anti, all priority. I was like, it's okay. And he, and he broke through your soak. Yeah, yeah, and he ate through my five points of soak. I was like, devastated. <laughs> Ah, you were devastated, oh. I see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, okay, so that pretty much does it for an Eligor Schechter match. <laughs> Eligor yes, Schechter match exactly. is amazing. <laughs> it's actually super fun, that matchup. Uh, oh my gosh. It wasn't it fun was for the, me. It was the most played matchup. I like We, we played that game so many times to build devastation. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Um, oh my gosh. But, uh, but yeah, we should talk about the news. Cause, oh, um, right. So that pretty much does it for 99 got... questions. If you guys have any questions for us, me and Brad, I'm sorry, but Charles... May not be in the next episode. It really depends on whether or not we decide to keep him. Uh, do we put him back in the stockade after this, Brad? We don't know. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's up to if the you guys viewers, have any right? questions, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please put in the comment section down below, and we will answer those questions eventually. And now let's move on to this wonderful, wonderful news nine nine, where we give you hot baked news straight from the CEO's mouth. Brad, give us that hot fresh. Sp- Sauce. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, um, the news. Let's see. This week, uh, Temporal Odyssey will have ended by the time you're listening to this. So, um, But it's not too late. We will have a pledge manager set up pretty soon. If not already, you can visit Kickstarter. Check out Temporal Odyssey. This game is $20. Um, it's one of our most accessible games ever. It ships pretty much everywhere in the world for like 5 bucks. So this is a game you don't want to miss. Uh, it's going to be quite a lot of fun. We added a bunch of extra stuff through the Kickstarter, extra classes, extra um, what's the, extra travelers. Like There's Kickstarter bonus characters. You can play as Welsey from Battlecon. You can play as Pritchard from Millennium Blades. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. So there's that. Um, otherwise, in the news, we are currently working on Devastation Remastered Edition. Ooh. Um, we'll probably be bringing you that sometime next year. Uh, so keep an eye out for Devastation Remastered. Also, um, we'll be bringing, uh, we'll be working on Imperial Spells and Steam and Seventh Cross. So those are going to be our three big releases for next year: Devastation Remastered, Imperial, and Seventh Cross. So keep an eye out for those. You should start to see um, a lot more word about them in the next uh, two or three months. But um, we won't be doing any more big Kickstarter projects this year. We'll just be doing, um, you know, our regular Black Friday sale and uh, Christmas giveaway. So look out for those when they come. Um, every Christmas, uh, starting with last year, we gave away Disc Duelers. This year, we're going to be giving away another game. Um, the game will be $0 in our store. You just have to pay to have it shipped to you. And you can uh, get something cool from us this year. 
Yay! Oh man, I always love the Christmas giveaways. Oh. It's fun times. Fun oh. times. Maybe you'll you'll play something that you never thought you would. I mean, it's free, right? Charles, would you say no to free board games? I would never say f- uh, no to free board games. Free board games as well. You might say no to the price of shipping. Oh, that, that's now. actually fair <laughs> because that makes it not free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, I probably got uh, like most of the eleven nine nine games things. I think. I probably. Are you sure? Have. Do you have yeah. Resistor? Do you have? I have Resistor. Yes. Noir of Indians. I have Noir. <laughs> you have Resistor. Yes. Oh my gosh! Okay, never mind. Do then. you do you have Seven Card Slugfest? I do not have Seven Card Slugfest, but it's not the game. Uh, it's not a game that I enjoy. Unfortunately, oh. it's it's too quick for me. Okay. I am so slow. I must think out <laughs> everything. Uh, I, I I mean, see. I would sit there having one card in hand and be like, hmm, who is the optimal play? And then I will <laughs> put it over, and then the ga- round is over, and I'm super dead last, and I'm super sad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I see, I see. All right. Um, so for myself, uh, we have news. Um, if you're listening to this, I probably have already released the new. Uh, contest just look at our blog site for it um i'm gonna be completely honest with all of you guys i don't have the details just yet so i'm sorry i can't really make a stupid everything's hazy in the future past yeah i mean i can't make a stupid bad commercial about it so i'm sorry about that but uh, we will announce it on the website so keep an eye out for that uh i've also probably already released the winners to our argent one argent contest so keep an eye out for that i've also probably should be inviting all of you to play some BattleCon online if you guys didn't know or don't keep up with our social media. We have made the alpha open to everyone. So if you guys want to play BattleCon... Yay! So if you guys want to play BattleCon online and beat Marco at the game because he's bad at it, do so. Just download the client. Uh, We will have those... Check it out on Facebook. There's a guide on how to get the client and play right now. How about you, Charles? Do you have anything you want the world of Indians to know about before we end this podcast? Uh, no. Uh, thanks for uh, being a wonderful community. Uh, I feel like uh, I had to get to say that, right? <laughs> it's a wonderful community, <laughs> and uh, I really like everyone uh, I've been speaking with here. So, yeah, uh, it's it's wonderful. Uh, come join us. Uh, I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Is, is having fun with yeah. friends. Yeah, so true. and we got a lot of we got a lot of good friends yeah. in this community. Sure. Yes, because we're an anime, <laughs> and we all know that in anime, the most important thing is friendship. It's friendship, yeah, exactly. And take all right, over the world that episode, for this episode okay. of Level Nine. <laughs> Naruto, Sasuke. Okay, <laughs> that pretty much does it for this episode of the Level Cap Podcast. As usual, it has been me, your host, Marco De Santos, also known as Mechanic Rigney, and with me is my wonderful, wonderful co-host, CEO of Level 99 Games, and Lord Creator of the Indians. Yeah, Brad Talton. And our special... And also our special guest, three-time world champion, Charles Ingstrom. Did I say that, that right? That is correct. Ingstrom. Ingstrom. Uh, nice okay. being here. Thank you, guys. for having me. And as yeah. usual, happy gaming! And don't forget your fourth special action. Good night, world of Indians. Good night.